Bishop McAlilly, board and staff members, thank you for being here today and thank you for your leadership. We have important business this week and your input and contributions are key. Uh, show my first slide, friends. Can you see that? It's one of those moving escalators. It's only it's not escalating, it's a moving walkway. And uh, this is in Heathrow Airport. It's stunning that that direction would be needed, I, I think. <laughs> Y'all are supposed to laugh. <laughs> As you know, we shifted our board meeting this week to allow Bishop McAlilly and me to attend the 50th anniversary of the Concordat between the British Methodist Church, MBC. And as a part of that celebration, Bishop McAlilly, on behalf of GBHEM, will announce and sign a new lead hub agreement with the Reverend Dr. Stuart Jordan of Wesley House at Cambridge University. Wesley House is providing cutting edge theological, global theological education, and our partnership with them formalizes and strengthens our common mission. I am pleased that our board is making the concordat between the Methodist British Church and the United Methodist Church an actual working relationship. All this is happening simultaneously with the IAMSCU board meeting. So you can imagine that between these two major events, uh, Amos and Kimberly are uh, in charge of most of these things and, and they are uh, working overtime on our behalf and we're, we're grateful. We will have our first lead hub event for IAMSCU at Wesley House following the Oxford Institute. And uh, Dr. Tom Wolfe, the new president of IAMSCU, will bring greetings from IAMSCU at our closing plenary. Uh, I also want you to know uh, about some recent staff changes. Amanda Allen will be leaving us at the end of this month after five years. Uh, she's made a great contribution to GBHEM and DHE in her work with schools, colleges, universities, and we will miss her. We also say, say farewell to Denicia Jones, who has been with our communications office for two years. Her last day was Friday. Uh, we, were, we had a reception, going away reception for her uh, last Friday and uh, she was telling us that her new job is in Green Hills Mall and one of the biggest uh, challenges she will face in her new job is not driving here first. <laughs> also in terms of staff, we conducted interviews for our Division of Higher Education Associate General Secretary's position last week and are making an offer to the top candidate. I am greatly encouraged by the quality and depth of the field and uh, want you to know that we are committed to rebuilding our Division of Higher Education and I think uh, Mark will agree with me that uh, the quality of persons we interviewed uh, is exceptional. We have also had staff members lose loved ones, uh, Kathy Stewart lost her brother last week and this week we learned that she has also lost her 28 year old stepdaughter so our prayers are with her family also Amos Nascimento lost his father so we we pray for these families in their grief uh, you probably noticed that Crystal was scheduled to be part of our worship service this morning and and Crystal got word that uh, her family, uh, one of her family friends uh, was, was shot and her father who is in a SWAT team was also shot at. He is fine but she was a little 
shaken this morning. And so we remember her in, in our prayer. And we also, uh, I hope that you will, you will uh, extend your, your care to her when she rejoins us. We also have a joy to share today. Eric, tell us about your good news. Congratulations. That's great. Most of us are familiar with the five stages of grief, both as those who offer pastoral care and as those who have also lost loved ones. What I think we are doing in the United Methodist Church and General Board of Higher Education as embedded in the larger church is living through the four stages of disruption and innovation. Uh, in some ways, undergoing disruption is analogous to the classic stages of grief. Rather than five stages of grief, Stephen Sanofsky describes four stages that comprise the innovation pattern. The disruption of the incumbent, rapid and linear evolution, appealing convergence and complete reimagination. And I'll be giving you this, this draft. Uh, together, board and staff, we have observed and participated in the disruption of the United Methodist Church. The upcoming 2019 and 2020 General Conferences, the Way Forward Report, and Judicial Council decisions have caused us to rethink our purpose and mission and move toward innovation. How we have done that in GBHEM is imagine and plan for the innovation of the Leadership Center for the United Methodist Church. Uh, this sign that I saw in Heathrow Airport, I think wrestles with what it means to align in the direction in which you're going. And in the past year, we at GBHEM and the staff and board have been thinking about how we align ourselves in this new direction, wrestling with what this means, wrestling with aligning staff to the innovation. Sanofsky says that one of the historical realities of disruption is uncovering the I told you so evidence, which is always there. Because no matter what happens, somebody always said it would. Good, you're, you're getting my jokes. I'm... Thank you. Tripp, you know how this feels, don't you? Yes. One of our key roles as leaders is to make choices and choosing courses to a riskier course versus defense of the current approach. So we have disruption of the current incumbent reality, rapid linear evolution as we begin to follow this new path, looking differently at our landscape. Even in disruption, older practice evolved for a reason and those reasons are sometimes still valid. Third step is the appealing convergence. How do these, this disruption, how do we find our footing in a new direction? When the market begins to wake up to the new realities, a new sense of stability develops, and we look back to move forward. Fourth step is complete reimagination melding the old into the new into a completely different solution. And reimagining is important because the breakthroughs subsume all that came before. So perhaps instead of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, we offer Christ to the spiritually homeless. 
Perhaps instead of the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry, we equip leaders for the United Methodist Church. Our question is, can we converge rapidly, revisit more assumptions, and show flexibility to abandon some things while doing new things? This is the big picture as I see it. Given the results of the ROI study and the branding study by DVL, the cabinet received the branding study last Monday and as a result of, result of the convergence of the branding study and the ROI study, we are making some staff changes to realign our staff in this new direction, changing our form to follow our new function. We are creating the Office of Strategic Leadership shifting Ray from Deputy General Secretary to Associate General Secretary in the Office of Strategic Leadership. We have begun realigning staff responsibilities, asking people from DOM, DHE, and communications to move to the new office. We had the first of these staff conversations on Friday, and you will hear more in more detail about these changes in your division meetings. In conclusion, I want to share with you uh, this painting by Norman Adams. Can you make that any bigger or is that what we see is what we got? Okay. Um, this uh, painting is called the Golden Crucifixion and it's being used at my request at the, as the cover of the Covenant Worship Service for the Oxford, Oxford Institute next week, which I'm preaching. Um, I see this as a visceral image of the resurrection of Christ, that God raises Christ from the dead. You can see the central butterfly as Christ. That as God raises Christ from the dead, he is metamorphed, he is changed. That his resurrection changes everything and metamorphs even us thieves with him. The women who weep and mourn at his death will only understand what happened on the third day. And there are those who, like the soldiers in the corner in the green, are oblivious to what God is doing. Friends, there's a place for all of us in this painting. Central is the mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ, and this is our story. As the United Methodist Church and as the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry, we are being metamorphed, changed through Christ. And as I look at this painting, I am grateful and thank God that it's not all up to us. Amen.